Hi, I'm Dave Soriano, chemistry professor with the University of Pittsburgh's Bradford campus in Western Pennsylvania in uh, the USA. Uh, what I want to do with this short video is introduce you to the patent literature and then uh, we will do, we will carry out a brief survey of uh, flying saucer technology what we can find in the US patent database. So we'll start here with Google, uh, Google Chrome, and you type in patents and you locate Google patents. Now don't go to the United States Patent Trade uh, Mark, USPTO, don't go there. Actually Google takes you all the way back to uh, the founding fathers. So you click on uh, Google patents each time you do, you will see um, the literature showing up. So we will type in flying saucer, double quotes, and we'll search the patent literature. Now let's see what we find with UFOs and or flying saucers, depending on how the inventor de uh, describes it. The first one that uh, we will see here is uh, a patent um, application from 2008 and the inventor is Jubian Chen will read the application briefly and uh, what we see is um, the US patent application the inventor is Chen from uh, mainland China and uh, if we scroll down we can see the design of the flying saucer now make a note of the number it's publication number US filed 2010 and here is your number so you record that and if you ever type that in if you don't bookmark if you type in that patent application number up here you'll be able to retrieve this and you can also come up here and download uh, a PDF file in case you want to uh, uh, keep that on your uh, desktop or on a flash drive so uh, let's see what else we can find. We'll go back and uh, we'll see which other ones we come across. The second entry was granted to inventors Pinto. Now they show two with the same name, so it's probably a typo, but uh, in any event, we can read the patent. And this uh, was filed back in 1973. Patent number 3,774,865. Now, in general, a patent is issued for about 20 years. And the lifetime of the patent starts with the day you file, not when it's issued. Now, this was filed on January 3rd, 1972. So you can see that it took more than a year for this to be issued. And that is the starting time right there. Now, uh, you can file uh, patents, and uh, it's gotten a little cheaper. I'm not going to get into a discussion of the patent, uh, patent law, but an inventor can actually file a disclosure for about two or three hundred dollars and thus they have some type of legal document if they decide they want to then uh, find a prospective um, backer or someone that wants to buy the technology and uh, an invention disclosure and uh, because patents can cost oh they can cost thousands of dollars um, just uh, with legal fees in filing now anyway this flying saucer here we see the design with air bearings. The inventor has to uh, uh, issue, uh, in the case of uh, uh, aircraft, you, they have to have a drawing to accompany the patent application. And you can see the upper rotor blades on this. I don't know whether this one was ever put into production. You would have to read this, follow up on the inventor who lived in Brazil, and find out if this actually went into production. The next one we'll take a look at was from 1967, and this was issued to uh, 
Edward uh, Hedrick. So we'll take a quick look at this. And uh, this inventor was in, uh, he assigned it to uh, Whammo, the manufacturing company in California. And uh, he may or may not have been an employee, but the assignee is the generally the, the uh, company, the corporation that holds the rights. And many, many times the inventor is an employee of that company. Now let's see if there's any drawing here. Uh, what we get are some uh, top views of the craft. And uh, this was issued back, see the number 3359, so that's going to be back uh, probably in the 60s or 70s. 1965 is when it was filed. So these, this is old technology. These UFOs, uh, these were probably, uh, I wouldn't call them prototypes. Uh, we can go back towards the end of World War II and, the, of course, the mention of the so-called Foo Fighters, these uh, balls, these orbs that were seen over Germany and also over Japan towards the tail end of World War II. Now, the next one we'll take a look at here is um, was issued in, uh, let's see, 2006. And uh, the inventor is Richard White. And we can take a quick look at the drawing. And uh, here we see the thrust air intake or exhaust ports. Many, many people are reporting now so-called black triangles. They see these black triangles, and they're reporting lights on the underbelly of such craft. Uh, and uh, here you can see the uh, passenger seats. And uh, telescopic step ladder. You, of course, you have to have a way to get in and out of the craft. And this uh, technology uh, was um, applied for in uh, 2008. Now, whether the patent was issued or not, you'd have to go and do a little bit more work here in uh, Google Patents. Now here's, um, here's a flying saucer structure. Let's, uh, let's go to the next page. Um, and uh, here's a flying saucer capable of skipping on fluids. Now we all heard of these uh, so-called underwater, um, underwater UFOs and uh, submerged UFOs. And this uh, inventor was Thomas Clark. Notice there's no um, no mention of uh, an assignee. So he still holds the rights to this, presumably. And the patent came out on Christmas Day, 1990. Now in this technology, um, we see one that's able to skip on water. A flying saucer capable of skipping on fluids. And uh, it's a conventional flying saucer disc having a substantially circular dome-shaped body and downwardly extending rim at the periphery of the body. Now, you can also get an overview of the technology. There will be a description, and many times the background of the invention can teach you a great deal about the field. So if you want to learn about flying saucer aerodynamics, an excellent way to do that is to uh, take advantage of the U.S. Patent Database. And each inventor has to provide you with a background of the invention. What was the prior art? What has been out there in the open literature or in expired or current patents? What led to what you've come up with? Then you have a description of the drawings, and then you get the claims. And here is where the patent examiner working for the United States government will throw out or allow certain claims. Now if there's patent infringement, the first thing that a judge is going to ask the inventor is, well, where is your patent? And uh, they're going to go right to these claims to find out if uh, a company is 
supposedly infringing on your patent, you go right to the preferred embodiments or the claims that have been granted. And that's where they're going to look for infringement. There's a lot of people working on UFO technology. And what you're seeing here is a flying saucer, which is comprising in combination a disc. And said disc is including a substantially circular dome-shaped body and a downwardly extending rim substantially at the periphery of the said body, with said rim defining a downwardly extending edge said body being defined by an exterior surface extending exteriorly of said edge, etc., etc., etc. But here you're getting a detailed description of what is covered in this uh, technology. I hope you've enjoyed this brief in, uh, presentation, and uh, hopefully you can keep up on flying saucer or UFO technology with Google's uh, database of U.S patents and patent applications. Thank you. For more information, you can contact me at Soriano, S-O-R-I-A-N-O, at Pitt, P-I-T-T dot E-D-U, Department of Chemistry, University of Pittsburgh, Bradford, Pennsylvania. I'm a chemistry professor here. Take care.